But as we study this biblical passage of the Apostle Paul being caught up into the third heaven, there are a few things that stand out. For example, he was clear as to where he was taken. As far as in the vision, where did he go? On that he was clear. There was no confusion. He said, quote, I was caught up into the third heaven, end quote. And so the location of the vision was clear, the third heaven. However, he was uncertain as to whether it was just his spirit man that was taken up in this vision or whether it was his body and his spirit that were caught up in this vision because he mentions it twice. He mentions that uncertainty uh, both in verse 2 and in verse 3. Take a look at it. He said, whether I was in my body or out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows. But because of the certainty of where he was caught up, there's no doubt about that. And the reason I emphasize this is because I've heard some unlettered teaching that their mistake is in not knowing the difference. He was clear, I repeat, he was clear as to where he went. I was caught up into the third heaven. And so by the general law of deduction, we then can ask that if there is a third heaven, where is the first and where is the second heaven? I do want to pause to give you some warning about false teaching on this passage. Because if you're a student of the Bible and you endeavor to listen to Bible teaching, I always warn you, be careful as to who you listen to. Just because somebody figured out how to go live does not mean they were anointed to do so. And I constantly say, I would like to be a trusted voice in your life for learning the Bible, and in particular understanding end time events and Bible prophecy and eschatology that we spend a great deal of time upon. But for those of you who are new students, there is teaching that interprets this, that there are three different levels of heaven. And the teaching in a nutshell, and I'm not going to give it a lot of time and attention because it doesn't deserve it. This is only a warning, not a theological debate. And the warning is, there are not three levels of heaven. There are not three levels of heaven for believers. And this is what they usually teach. They'll teach that there's a high level of heaven for those who were the overcoming believers. But there's a second level of heaven for those who were not faithfully overcoming Christians and then there is a lesser level of heaven for those Christians who did not serve God faithfully. And so let me be very clear. In heaven, if you are born again, if you make it into heaven through salvation, by the grace of God, through the repentance of sin, through the receiving of Christ, and Christ alone in heaven, we are not going to be divided into various classifications. There is not a heaven for the overcoming Christian, another heaven for the middle of the road Christian, and another heaven for the carnal Christian. That simply is not a biblical teaching. And any teaching that infers that is not just poor teaching, it's heresy. So please make note of that. I also need to warn you about another thing because it seems like in these last days there are more and more false prophets, false apostles, false ministries who are sadly uh, lost in things that are not found anywhere in the scripture. And one of the trends is this increasing number of people whether they're doing it to gain social media audience, I'll not judge. But know this, one day when they stand before God, He will judge. I've heard people say, stop judging me, only God can judge me. Well, 
That should put a fear in your spirit because that's exactly right. One day you're going to stand before God and be judged. And all of your life, your motives, your actions, even every idle word will stand before the analysis and the examination of Almighty God. But there are people, and it just seems like there's more now than ever before, their ministry is based upon an experience they had in hell, or their ministry is based upon an experience that they had in heaven, or as one very popular individual who has now fallen and disgraced, his whole ministry was based upon that he uh, transported from earth to heaven where God gave him an angel, and the angel gave him messages, and he would preach, and people traveled from all over the world to hear him preach in Florida, and he was on all of the major evangelical circuits except for people who had discernment and knew better. But with time it came out that he was a charlatan and a fraud. It came out that he had a history of being a pedophile. He was a coke addict. He had committed adultery. He had left his wife. And it just got worse and worse. But he had a massive following for a period of time claiming that he was getting visions from his angel and he even uh, said, uh, my angel's name that meets me in my hotel, uh, her name is Emma, which should have been a clue uh, that he was absolutely nuts to begin with. But because people don't know their Bibles, they fall for that. So listen very carefully before I get into the meat of the teaching. Any ministry who claims to be transported back and forth from earth to heaven and they're receiving personal revelations from God that cannot be supported by the scriptures, you should run from those ministries like the plague. They are false prophets. They will not be in heaven. They will spend an eternity in hell for God is very careful. Anyone who adds to or takes away from this book, now that's found in Revelation, and some people would say, well, that only applies to Revelation. No, that was the standard for Revelation. And since Revelation is a part of the canon of Scripture, it is equally true that it is God's standard for the entirety of the Bible. Anyone who adds to these words or takes away from these words or ignores these words or claims to have personal revelations from God either from experiences in heaven or from experiences in hell or some type of angelic manifestation, know that you're dealing with a fraud and a charlatan exclamation point. I hope I've made that clear. Everything God wants you to know about heaven is revealed in the Bible. Everything you need to know about heaven is already in the Bible. And as for the rest, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 29, I believe it's also verse 29, that the secret things belong to the Lord. And so we should not be spending a whole lot of attention trying to reveal secret things and things the Bible said are a mystery. There's enough truth in the Bible reading it with your eyes and seeing blatantly what God intended through the original authors to get you from where you're at to where you need to go. So with that said, a true man or woman of God, and uh, some of you might need to write this down if you're a new believer, but a true man or woman of God is not marked by visions and revelations and angelic appearances. And I'm not denying that some of these things happen. I'm just saying that that's not how you evaluate the fruit of a ministry. A ministry, a true man or woman of God is marked by Christian character, is marked by the tenure of their battle in the battle in warfare for the kingdom of God and for the fulfillment of the Great Commission, is marked by Christ-like attitude, is marked by genuine humility, is marked by a true passion for souls, and listen carefully, and is marked by 
how accurately they handle the sacred scriptures when they present and when they teach the eternal truth of God. Question number one, what is the first heaven? If you're taking notes, what is the first heaven? In the Bible, the first heaven refers to the earth's atmosphere. And in some theological circles, they refer to this as the atmospheric heaven. Uh, in meteor Meteorology 101, you would learn that the atmosphere above the earth is divided into five classifications. And there's a graphic there for you to take a quick look. And uh, I'm not a meteorologist, but this is just common knowledge that there is first what is called the troposphere. And that extends from the face of the earth to seven miles above the earth. Then this layer called the troposphere provides the oxygen that we breathe, keeps earth at a livable temperature, and allows for weather to occur, making it a very important part of the total atmosphere. And so if you'd like, at a later time, you can hit pause and study that graphic. But did you know that the Bible actually spoke of this? The prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament knew about the fact of this first heaven before meteorology was a field of study. Let me show you that in the Old Testament. Uh, Isaiah chapter 55. If you have your Bible, Isaiah chapter 55. And go down to, uh, I believe it's verse 10. Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 10. There the prophet Isaiah said, The rain and snow come down from the heavens and stay on the ground to water the earth. They cause the grain to grow, producing seed for the farmer and bread for the hungry. He was referring to the first heaven. Then we not only have the troposphere, we have the stratosphere, which extends 30 miles above. Then when he prayed again, the sky, and you can highlight the word sky, sent down rain and the earth began to yield its crops. Uh, the word sky from the New Living Translation in James chapter 5 and verse 18 in the original Greek is oronos. And uh, I don't expect you to take notes on the Greek, just letting you know that the New Testament manuscripts that we have our modern English translation from were rendered from the Greek. And the word translated sky that I read to you in the Greek is oronos. And it literally is the same word that is translated in other places as heavens or in other places as air. Uh, we also have mention of this in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2. Uh, the Bible speaks about Satan and his demons having power in the air. And so this is actually where, listen carefully, Satan and demonic activity, all of the wickedness, all of the ungodliness, all of the sin, all of the perversion that you see on planet earth is a result of Satan and the fallen demons 
who reside in the first heaven, which is the atmosphere. And so the Bible tells us that there was a great war in heaven and Satan, along with one-third of the angels, was cast to the face of the earth. And so Satan and all demon spirits that we wrestle against, that's why the Bible teaches concerning spiritual warfare in the book of Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, wickedness, demonic influence, powers in high places, all of Satan's activity and all demonic activity is relegated to the first heaven. Now that's a Bible study in and of itself, and we do have teaching and series in our uh, YouTube channel on demonology as well as angelology. We'll get back to that at a later time. Question number two, what is the second heaven? The second heaven is sometimes called in theological circles as the celestial heaven. We have the atmospheric heaven, and then the second heaven is the celestial heaven. This second heaven refers to outer space or the stellar heaven, and it includes the sun and the moon and the planets and the stars, and it is called the second heaven or the celestial heaven. People say, well, is that found anywhere in the Bible? Well, if you followed me any length of time, you know that I wouldn't teach something that I couldn't back up with Scripture. Uh, how many times have you heard me say that we start in the Bible, stay in the Bible, and finish in the Bible? So let's locate that. It's in the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy and the fourth chapter and verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. And when you look up into the sky and see the sun, moon, and stars, all the forces of heaven, don't be seduced into worshiping them. The Lord your God gave them to all the peoples of the earth. And so God rules over the stars, the constellations, the sun, the moon, all of which played a very significant role in ancient religious practices. But did you know that as a part of God's wrath and as a part of God's judgment in a period of time called the tribulation, now, you've heard me teach on prophecy. The next major prophetic event is an event called the rapture of the church. After the rapture of the church is a seven-year period of time called the tribulation period. And the wrath and the judgment of God during the seven years of tribulation is going to be so severe that Jesus said, that if God the Father had not shortened the days, that none could survive. But many people have never been taught that the second heaven, the celestial heaven, where the constellation, the sun, the moon, the stars, the second heaven is actually going to be an apocalyptic part of the wrath and the judgment of God during the tribulation period. Uh, let's go into the Old Testament book of Isaiah and let me uh, support that for you. Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13, verses 10 through 13. The Bible said, the heavens... This refers to the second heaven, the celestial heaven. How do you know that? Let's read on. The heavens will be black above them. The stars will give no light. The sun will be dark when it rises. The moon will provide no light. Pause right there. Here we know it's the second heaven, the celestial heaven, because it identifies the location by the planets. Let's read on, verse 11. 
I, the Lord, will punish the world for its evil and the wicked for their sin. I will crush the arrogance of the proud and humble the pride of the mighty. I will make people, highlight this, I'll explain it. I will make people scarcer than gold, more rare than the fine gold of Ophir. Now, what does that mean? Well, tragically, it means exactly that. During the tribulation period, the wrath and the judgment of God, all of the apocalyptic events that are coming on the earth after the rapture are going to be so severe that it will diminish the earth's population to where humanity, the Bible said, will be scarcer than gold. Now, gold is not scarce in the sense of uh, there's only a nugget here and a nugget there. There's a lot of gold on the earth. But it's a comparison that tells us that the population of the earth will be severely diminished during the tribulation period and a part of what will eradicate such a large portion of humanity upon the earth will be what God is going to do in the second heaven with the planets. The planets, the sun, the moon, the stars have great impact upon the livability of this planet. We've all seen or heard of Hollywood movies where a comet from 